Salmon up. What if you went to a nice restaurant and talked with the chef about vegetables and then discovered you were talking to the farmer who grew them? Chef and farmer, farmer and chef, one and the same in this place. That's up next on Chef's Appeal. Just garnish them on top with a nice thing of herbs. Okay. The upper northwest corner of America, the fir trees green all year round, the snow-covered mountains framing Seattle. That's where the farmer chugs along aboard an ancient tractor old enough to have a nickname. Started with a one-acre plot and now have three acres and um, Pepe, an old tractor. That, farmer uh, Brian Schieser. Uh, it started out as a hobby farm and now it's an actual working piece of dirt. Okay, so he's a dirt farmer in a suburb of Seattle. Ten minutes later, he's a famous chef whose restaurant, Trellis, is in Kirkland. The intent is to have fun, um, to bring a quality of product to our guests that they might not get in every restaurant every day. The chef is a man whose work on the plate begins in the dirt. I would probably say 75% of me is chef and 75% of me is farmer and the 50% extra is um, the time that I don't waste in a day. <laughs> it's a love of farming and cooking, and I think it's bringing both of them together. Chef Brian Schieser personifying the idea of farm to table. I think it's really important that the freshness that's brought into the restaurant, it's not put on a truck, it's not shipped halfway around the world, that we're 10 minutes away, so our lettuces are on the plate within an hour of being harvested from the garden. In a place where farmland has mostly been swallowed up by development, there's 47 acres of a community farm <laughs> where a few dozen folks tend small plots. That one's a big one. South 47th Farm started about eight years ago, and it was a group of investors that bought a piece of land to keep it in farmland trust so that it wouldn't be developed and put into homes. I'm a tenant farmer on the farm. It's a real community, real people, real food. Oh, look. Early, t I'll take that. Oh, what? Whoa. That's the yeah. first tomato. You can't yeah, eat I get that it. back. Look at a red one, even. No, no, you're not <laughs> getting the red one. First tomato of the season for me. A community farm is a storehouse of community knowledge, hints, advice. Help is always just a few rows over. Everett Broderick has been farming alongside Brian Cheeser for four years. The fathers are all just coming up beautifully. It's early morning, summer in Seattle. Time for the farmer to get to work. So they're perfect right now for just eating raw right out of the field. Like I say, I've never had fathers before really other than Ethiopian food. Like it's kind of neat to have them. You throw the pot on the grill, it grills it, it steams the the bean inside, okay. and then you just eat them with this, just open them up a little bit of salt on them, and it's sort of a different little take on the edamame. Oh. These and some um, nasturtium flowers together. Together, the spiciness. Nice and little the, salad. Yeah, all right. Some of the weaker plants, they get attacked by the aphids. aphids yeah. They suck the sap. They have mm -hmm. little tiny beaks, and they get in there, and they just they drain the drain plant. Drain the plant eventually. Look, yeah, at, look, look at all at the right ladybugs. Yeah. yeah, look at these. It's really beautiful. Look at that. And the ladybugs are just taking care of all those aphids and eating them. What was the old thing? Ladybug, ladybug. Fly away home. Fly away your home. house is on fire and your children may burn. What if you could tell like kids, that. huh? I know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just leave them on the fathers. <laughs> the ladybug, nature's pesticide. No spraying, organic farming at its best. So th this fennel here, I mean. Yeah, you planted these seeds. I you start, it, that's right. I remember yeah, you started okay, all the fennel. That. Okay, yeah. So Look at the root structure on that, you know? So now that's, that's what you're going to use for cooking, right? You discard um, actually, this so that you no, for garnish? No, no, no. There's going to be several parts. The top of the fennel, the fronds, can be used in garnishes. They also can be put into salads. The stems here can be used in infusing um, the fennel flavor into stocks. Okay. The bulb part here will be grilled or shaved very fine for a fennel salad. And then when we're making soups and things, we just take and clean this whole root up, the fennel root down there. Little tiny bulbs oh. can be 
They're That's great. Really good. Something really fun. You just take these little tiny and For like a dip. You can okay. dip them in, yeah. bite the end. Really unique way to serve different things and use different applications. The farmer tending this fennel knows it takes about four months to mature. So the chef is thinking hard about how he will use every last bit of the plant. All the lettuces um, that you planted are just coming up beautifully. There's the curly red leaf and you know, the, the bibs. One, the one thing about this cool spring is the lettuces are really thrived. Mm -hmm. Some of the things aren't doing well, but the lettuces are doing great. Dill is starting to come up, the cosmos. And look at the flowers. And we'll take the borage flowers and um, the candium. But borage has a beautiful little cucumber flavor to it. I don't quite get the cucumber flavor, but it's good. I like it. Here, try the leaf. What happens when the hungry farmer reaches out and tastes, fresh from the field, inspiration? All right, this is your cultivated amaranth, yep. right? Here's the wild, which just grows naturally in the field. There's a lot of cultures that are using this as a spinach. I just had a long conversation yesterday with some uh, East Indian folks that were having a picnic. We were talking about amaranth, amaranth and lamb's mm -hmm. quarters. They were picking large quantities of our weeds to take right. home and eat. Lamb's quarter was considered poor man's spinach. It was a farmer's spinach. Look at the anise hyssop. That's beautiful. This is the one we planted last year. Um, right now we're making a sorbet, the licorice. Licorice mint? Mm-hmm. So do you use the leaves or the flowering heads? Um, actually, we use the leaves. The flowering heads go into a garnish. So we just okay, take them, we strip crumble. them back, and then crumble them in, and then you have that oh, little yeah. bite in the salad. You have a little licorice flavor. And look at the honeybees on it. Yeah, they're everywhere. I think um, it's amazing when it all comes together and all from the same, the same source, pretty look, much. Now we've scared them all away. <laughs> the honeybee. Without bees to pollinate our crops, more than one third of everything humans eat would not thrive. I did some rows with companion planting mm -hmm. and I just mixed the seeds together. I put fennel seeds, um, there were some nasturtium seeds, um, radish seeds, and planted them all in together. Okay. We harvested all the, the radishes when they were really beautiful. So now the nasturtiums are coming up, the fennel is coming up inside here. Okay, so you got um, that. Yeah, look at it. See, there's one of the radishes that radishes. was sort of left in there. So, tossed salad. Tossed, that is, when the seeds are planted. Up come carrots, fennel, nasturtium, radishes, all together. The radishes, we left some of them in so that they'll go to flour. And these flowers can be used in salads in the restaurant. Once the flowers are gone, um, we get the pods. And these little seed pods are just amazing. You can throw them Please. into like a little saute or mix them in mm. with vegetables Crunchy, because they have a little crunch, a little pepper yeah. to them. Nice. By companion planting, what happens is a lot of times you'll see radishes that'll have worm holes and bites right. in them. And by planting with the fennel, you sort of create this masked identity. So they can't smell the radishes, they can't smell the carrots, and it helps get an unblemished, really beautiful product. Look at that. Not a mark on Not it. Not at all. That's amazing. So we've confused the bugs. Yeah. They're all over on the fava beans. <laughs> <laughs> there are onions and greens, herbs and plants, all for the taking. So you were talking about grilling uh, these. Yeah. Escapes. What the onions are starting to do is they shoot to seed. We want to take them off, but we also use them in the restaurant. I think you can uh, probably take them home tonight and throw them on the grill. They're really delicious. It's um, the perfect escape. The perfect escape. escape. <laughs> Good. Not you better only go, is, you yeah, better go back, back to, to work stand. before we get in trouble. All right, Too much thanks, convincing Brian. in the field. Have you ever tried these efforts before? Okay. On a community farm, folks often show up to talk, to taste, to learn. Hey, guys. Hey. No fooling around. Come on, let's go. We have work to do. We're going to go pick some onions, some onions Sweet. and some strawberries. Sweet. What do you think, huh? Let's awesome. go. Come on. Cade, who is 10, and his little brother Drew are often at the farm visiting with Brian. Sweet. Okay, let's go in here. I think we're going to pick some onions. We want to pick the really big onions. This one? So, look at that there, huh? Cool. I'm going to pull out some of the big ones, hand them to you guys. And we peel And what you do is you peel out the outside skin and then just put them in a bundle. Here, Drew. So there. Here, I'll hold on to them. You peel. I'll help you. Look at this. You can't get any fresher than that. Are you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> so do you eat the green stuff or just the purple? Actually, um, what you can do is when the green stuff is really tender, you can eat it? Um, cut it and use it as a garnish or saute it. Are these sweet onions or? 
These yes. are actually, they're a red sweet onion. Can I take a bite out of it? Sure, take a bite out of that one right there. <laughs> That's the best thing, you know, when you're eating something in the field and it's fresh. Mm. Sweet, huh? And it tastes like onion. Like onion. Sweet onion? Sweeter than what my mom usually buys. Ah, that's, you know why that is? Because it's fresh? Because it's fresh, yeah. As soon as you pull it from the field, you know, all the sugars are there. It hasn't turned into starch yet. Chemicals haven't changed in it. So, Here. pretty good, huh? Should Better I keep than eating, eating an it? apple. No, I think one bite's enough, huh? Gross. Wouldn't you rather have a strawberry? We're gonna go right down the okay. row here. I see some nice big ripe ones right in there. Here, look at that. Ooh. Oh, we got some nice big strawberries sure in there. Sure, do you think it's ripe? Yes. You want a ripe one? Do you have a nice one? Let me see, I have to get one. Sure. All right, what do you think? Y'all have, you have a strawberry that looks good? Yeah. One. Wait, I'm gonna change mine. Two, three. Yum. Mmm. Mm. Can you get a better strawberry than that? I don't know, I haven't tasted this one yet. Oh, maybe, trace that one, huh? This one's pretty ripe. Yeah, it's beautiful. And when you pick it, you want to make sure you pick it from down here, okay? And you hold the stem so that you don't pull the stem out of the ground. And then do you take the leaf off if you want to? No, I think you should leave the leaf on until we get them into the restaurant. Okay. We can make, we make a lot of things with strawberries. We do strawberry vinegars for making salad dressings. We use fresh strawberries. We put balsamic vinegar on them. Uh, strawberry shortcake? Strawberry shortcake, yep. How long does it take a strawberry to grow? If they start to get berries in May. How long is that? 90 days? Yeah, about. Mm -hmm. Maybe. About 90 days. And what we want to do now is we want to get these back to the kitchen as soon as possible and turn them into something really beautiful. So we're going to make a strawberry shortcake okay. while okay. the flavors and everything are still fresh. Okay. All right, okay. let's go. Come on. Okay. One for the road, huh? Yeah. More compost. Brought today by sous chef Joshua. Chef yep. and Sue on the farm. But dinner guests will be arriving at the restaurant in an hour or two. It's time to harvest what will be on their plate. So we need to grab, let's grab some artichokes first. Okay. Oh, well, these are good. Don't want them too small. If you get them too big, they're really fibrous. Why don't you grab that one there? Okay, we're gonna let these go here. Go to flower. Yep. Oh, look at this. These are beautiful right here. Grab that one. You want them just about the size of a softball. The Hearts are gonna be really, really, really tender and beautiful inside. Oh, look at this, this is beautiful. Look at this plant, Josh. We got at least 15 artichokes on here. Poach them, serve them with our halibut dish. Take the leaves off the outside, okay. clean them out, and we'll quarter them and serve them with the halibut. Just garnish them on top with a nice thing of herbs. Okay. So that, that's a viola over there. Viola is a little bit more floral. Sort of deadly with the little picks yeah. on the end, but that's probably good, huh? So let's go get the herbs that we need. That night's menu being written among the fields. Josh, look at the sage here. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. We got three different. Let's get some. Why don't you get this one here? Okay. Just get those tender tips. Wow, smell that, huh? It's great. Chives, these are looking pretty good. Put the wow, broccoli on the steak. Yeah. Putting in the vinaigrettes. Yeah. Good. We can grab a little bit of rosemary okay. over here. You go in the rosemary sauce on the chicken and garnishes. We should do some oils too before the end of the season. Infuse some rosemary oil. Beautiful. You smell the oils in them. They're yep. so fresh. Still have them on your hands, huh? Chef with farmer hands. Chef with farmer hands. Good. So you're going to go back to the restaurant. Yep. I'm going to finish up a couple things here and um, I'll see you later this evening. Okay. With all the beautiful onions that we picked in the garden just a few minutes ago when we were over there, we have our fresh strawberries and our onions. I'm gonna to put together a very quick salad. I took the red onion and just sliced it, put it on the grill for just a few minutes with just a little bit of olive oil. I'm gonna take those onions, put them on a plate. It's a great spring salad, a few fresh strawberries. And I'm using the strawberries with the onions. It's something that's not always done, but we're gonna drizzle this with olive oil and balsamic and strawberries, balsamic, and olive oil go really well together. It's a spring dish. It's a young onion, so it's not really, um, doesn't have a lot of bite. It's still sweet because it was picked from the field. Put a little salt and pepper, and you want a little bit of a crunch to it. You want to have the cold texture of the strawberry. You want to have a crunch from the onion. Put a little fresh fennel on top of that. Aged balsamic, just a little drizzle of the balsamic over the top. 
how beautiful that sits in the oil there. And I'm gonna to top this with a little grassini, a breadstick. If you make breadsticks at home, or you can just buy the breadsticks, little grassinis from the store, and we have a beautiful spring onion and strawberry salad. Quick, easy, and fun. I'm gonna do a piece of um, pan-seared wild salmon. It's already been filleted and pin-boned out. Zucchini and yellow squash with the blossoms still on that we just picked a few minutes ago in the garden. Garnished with artichoke, oven-dried tomatoes, and drizzled with a little olive oil. So it's a very quick, simple dish. I'm gonna start out by showing just the preparation on the artichoke. A lot of times we find fresh artichokes in the store and we don't always know what to do with them. You can take and poach them whole, just like this. You put a little lemon, um, bay leaf, salt, and pepper into the water. So you have to be careful you hold on to it. We're gonna take those top leaves and cut them right off. And then I'm gonna take and cut the bottom off. Just take those outside leaves off there. And we're prepping this for poaching. We're gonna poach it with a little salt, cold water, lemon juice, and bay leaf. Once it comes up to a boil, you simmer it for about 10 minutes and then check it for tenderness, but it takes about 15 minutes after it comes up to a simmer. So what we've done is we've prepared the artichoke heart. So now we need to do one more step after it's poached. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the chokes or the little thistle out of the center and you take a spoon and just carefully scoop that out. And then we have the artichoke heart, which is really the most delectable part of the artichoke. What we're gonna do is we're gonna save all this and this goes into our compost bin and that'll go back out to the garden. So next, I'm gonna take the salmon and we're gonna pan sear it quickly. We're gonna heat the pan up before we put the fish in. We don't wanna put the oil in right away. We just wanna get the pan warm. And this is gonna cook very quickly. A little olive oil, and we just wanna set it in away from us so it doesn't splash the oil towards us. Um, at this point, we're gonna put a little salt and pepper. So I'm gonna turn my heat down now. Just remove that for one second. We're gonna flip that salmon over. Salmon cooks very quickly, so once we have the sear on the bottom and we flip it over, we can just set it off to the side for a couple of minutes and it's gonna continue to cook through. Um, my preference is to eat it medium, medium rare, so I like it a little bit raw in the center. So next, we're gonna take our squash, we're just gonna cut them in half, and we wanna saute these really quick. And the blossoms add a really beautiful flavor. Get our pan warm, we're gonna put a little olive oil, a little salt and pepper. Squash was just picked a few minutes ago from the garden, so it's fresh, and it's gonna cook very quickly. What we wanna do is we just wanna toss it in the oil, salt and pepper. One of the most important things when you're cooking at home, especially if you're entertaining and you have guests over, is that you wanna prep as much stuff in advance and spend as much time with your guests as possible. Coming from the garden and coming from the market, the freshness of the food speaks for itself. We wanna do as little to it as possible so that all the flavors speak for themselves. We're gonna garnish this with our fresh artichoke on top. A few oven dried tomatoes. We have a little dill and a little fennel. Put our fresh herbs on top. We're gonna drizzle the dish with a little olive oil. I made a little lemon dressing. Salmon goes really beautifully with lemon. A dusting of salt, a little pepper, and we have a fresh spring salmon dish. Well, we're gonna start out by making the strawberries that we picked okay. are fresh, so we wanna make a little strawberry shortcake. And we're gonna start out by mixing our biscuits. So we have all our ingredients. So we measured out our flour here. We have our biscuit cutter, our butter, two eggs, cup of cream, quarter cup of sugar, and vanilla. The first thing we're gonna do, is put this in here. Just put all our flour in the mixer. Does it matter how much vanilla you put in it? Um, we're only gonna put about a tablespoon of vanilla. That's okay. with the recipe. One of the most important things when baking is that you really measure everything. When you're cooking, and we're gonna make a little salad and we can ad lib with the salad and change things around, but in baking, it's really important to follow the recipe. So that's why we've measured everything out and have it ready to go. And the next thing, we're gonna put the sugar in. The whole thing? Yep, the whole thing. And we just wanna mix on stir for just a second so that we mix the sugar and the flour and incorporate it in. Okay, now we can add the cream, okay. the vanilla, and the eggs. Um, does it matter which order or nope. anything? No, go ahead. No. The vanilla first, good. The eggs, one, two, beautiful. And the cream, oh, all in. My bad. That's all right, that's what we have that for. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just turn this on slow, 
and we just want to get the eggs and the cream incorporated into the flour. So biscuits are very delicate. You don't want to overmix them. If you overmix them, what happens is they become tough. So we're going to just take and put our butter into this now, and I have a spoon so that we can, you want to just take that and put the butter in. Now we just want to incorporate the butter. And we're going to put the flour down on the board. Now what we want to do is make sure we have some flour on our hands and some flour on top there. And we're just going to roll that just very lightly. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to take this. We want to cut the biscuit. I'm going to use the knife underneath so when we pick it up, it doesn't stick. How about that, huh? Yeah. Now what we want to do is we want to brush the biscuits with just a little bit of butter, very delicately. Sure, you do the okay. first okay. There you go. Beautiful. Move to the next. Oh, look at that. Nice shine. It's going to add a little bit of flavor to it. All right, now what we want to do is we want to sprinkle it with a little organic sugar. Now you can put as much or as little of this as you want. So whichever biscuit you're going to get is the one that... Uh, I'm getting that one. That one? Okay, good. Maybe a little less on the one for mom. And dad, does dad eat sugar? No, dad probably doesn't eat any sugar, so we'll leave one plain. How about that? This one for the dog. Yeah. There you go. So you put these in the oven? Yeah. Ready? Good. Now we can move on to the strawberries. Sweet! So first we have to get the flour off our hands. Ready? One, two, three. We have the strawberries that we picked just a little bit ago. Okay. Can we have one? A little one? bit of whipped cream. Of course you can have one. And then we have just a little bit of sugar here. So what I want you to do is take these strawberries, put them in there. Okay, so just pour these in? Yep. Yeah. Okay. A little sugar. And then you're going to mix those up. What about the other one? I'm going to save those, actually. Now, do you remember which ones you picked? Yeah. yeah. Which ones? That one, 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 and that one. And that one. Good. So I think the biscuits are probably almost done. Okay. As we put the sugar on, it's called macerating the strawberries. It's going to bring all the juices from the strawberries out so we have a little bit of sauce. Can you taste one? Yeah, of course you can taste one. Can we taste, can we take a bite of the And this is just a little bit of whipped cream, so we're going to garnish it with whipped cream. Mm-hmm. That's good. I'm going to check and take the biscuits out of the oven. And I work with stuff in the kitchen all the time, so I can pick up hot things and it doesn't bother me. Why do you take the bottom off? Well, we want to create almost like a sandwich. So we're going to take our strawberries, and we're going to put our strawberries. Oh, I get it. A little of our whipped cream. I'm going to put a dollop of whipped cream on top of that. How about uh, Yep. One? Which strawberry do you think? Uh, this one. And we're going to place that right on top there. Look at that, a little garnish on top. Huh? Cool. How's that look? That's a strawberry that shortcake. good. And I made a little bit, just a little bit of strawberry sauce earlier. And I took some of these strawberries and I just put them in the blender. And we're going to take and put that sauce around. And we might even put a little right there. So we're just going to take a little lavender sprig and put it on top. So what do you think? Should we taste it? Yes. yes. You just take right down, get a little bit of cream, a little strawberry. Sure, you're going to wreck it. Is it okay if we totally just, just try this? Oh, I don't know. You know, not on the first bite, maybe on the second. I get a big one. It's the best part. Mmm. Yeah, they're all good. Good. Thank Very you. Very good. Are you going to make this at home with Mom? Yes. Oh, you took now, we picked one. that strawberry not even, what, an hour ago? Yeah. When we were in the field? Can't get much fresher than that. 